Hey everyone, it's Jason Shadrick with PremierGuitar.com and we're here with John Jorgensen who's playing a gig tonight with his Gypsy Jazz Quintet and he's going to walk us through the guitars and pedals and amps he uses uh, in this band. So John, uh, thanks for joining us. Hey, my pleasure. <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about the, the guitar you're, you're playing on this tour. Well, I've been working with Jeton uh, for quite a number of years. This is a signature model um, and I believe this is kind of like the second revision but it's patterned after a Selmer guitar from the 1930s. And uh, but it's got a few different touches, you know, just a few cosmetic things like this, you know, these, this binding and whatever. Um, mainly, this, this one I just changed the neck to walnut. The previous models had uh, a mahogany neck, but I like the sound of the walnut neck a little bit better. It's, Does it uh, change the feel at all, the neck between? Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, a little bit. It's also a very, if you notice, you can feel that neck. It's a very... Uh, strong u-shaped mm -hmm. neck unusual and um you know the, these these guitars are traditionally made with laminate so this is a, a three-ply laminate with uh, brazilian rosewood on the back on the outside um mahogany on the inside and birch in in the middle mm -hmm. so uh and um and you have some special picks there that you use for these right yeah these are um this is called a, a wegen w-e-g-e-n Fat tone, F-A-T-O-N-E, not like Joey from InSync, but anyway, uh, it's uh, quite thick, like five millimeters, and it's got kind of a, you know, it's beveled here. I don't know if you can see the bevel, you know, so you're not playing with the full five millimeters, but it's a really comfortable pick, and it's also a pretty bright pick. So I, I use picks as sort of like my EQ. So this pick I had copied from this one. Um, and it, this is made of tortoise shell. And, and a friend, a luthier in Japan, took this shape and copied it. And then I changed the tip a little bit. I don't know if you can tell. This is a much blunter tip. It still has a bevel to it. Um, but I copied the tip off of another pick that I liked. And, and it really is a little bit of a darker sound. So if I want to be more aggressive, I'll use this pick. These are kind of like if I had, you know, a two pickup guitar, and this is the front pickup and this is the bridge pickup. So. And does the direction of the bevel change anything? Like, does is, is it have to be a certain way? Well, these have an imprint on the thumb, so you always use them the same way. But actually, when you play back and forth, they, they wear exactly the same. I mean, I could, I could play it this way. It wouldn't make any difference, but it's, it's more comfortable this way. Um, so those are the picks, the strings. Uh, these yellow ones are John Pierce strings. This, this red one is an Argentine. And all of these strings are uh, steel core, like a normal steel string, but the winding is silver-plated copper, which is like a classical string. Yeah. So you got kind of an in-between a classical string and a steel string. And the two treble strings are? Oh, I don't know what they are. There's nothing unusual about the treble strings. They're just unwound. Standard. Yeah, this is a they're fairly light gauge, too. This is there's probably an 11, and this is a 15. Uh, this is probably 22, uh, this is probably 27, 35, 49. So they're fairly light, but this guitar has a long scale. It's longer than a Fender or Martin or Gibson. It's longer than any of those scales. Uh, 670 millimeters, I believe. Mm -hmm. So even though these are light strings, they're pretty tight. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have a lot of flap and a lot of give. And I always tend to play back here by the bridge, somewhere between the bridge and the sound hole. If you don't, if you play up here, you get that horrible clack sound and up here. And so that's, you know, these type of guitars have ladder bracing, which the braces go this way as opposed to an X brace uh, flat top. The top is a little bit arched. You can't, I don't know if you can see it, just barely this way and this way, just a little bit. And it's not a carved arch top, it's a pressed arch top. 
so, you know, this has elements of like a traditional F-hole arch top with the floating bridge and the tailpiece. This section of the bridge moves. These two don't, they're just for decoration. Um, and then you have a tailpiece and you got slotted headstock like a classical, but the shape and size is about a dreadnought shape. So you got elements of yeah. all the different guitars. It has a zero fret, which is a very European thing. Um, I don't know if you notice this foam right here in the sound hole. I put that in there because these guitars tend to have a very strong resonance on a low G. And like right now, if, if that wasn't in there, you'd hear a real strong pitch. And when you amplify it and everybody's playing, every time a G note comes out, it's really, really accentuated. So that helps to cut that. Makes, it makes it a, the guitar slightly deader overall, but for amplifying, it's so much better. And, uh, and what pickup system do you have on this well, guitar? It's not a pickup. It's just a little microphone. It's an uh, Audio-Technica Pro 70, it's called. And so it's a lavalier mic. And this is just a piece of the foam from a camera case. I put on there with Velcro. And I tried this everywhere. If you get it close to the sound hole, then you get a lot of bass feedback. Also, if you get it close to the strings, you get a real stringy, you get a lot of attack and stringy sound. Mm -hmm. And I noticed in the studio, whenever I put a mic in the studio, I always face it around here. That way you don't get too much woof or too much stringy sound. You get a lot of good mid-range clarity. So, you know, I've got the mic facing. It's, it's not touching the face, or it would rattle, but it's pretty darn close to it. So it still acts like a microphone, but it gives me a lot of left, more separation and I can get more gain mm -hmm. from the monitors out of it. And uh, so that, uh, that then, this, this is part of it. And you know, this is the little uh, preamp that goes with it, or the power supply rather. And it has a, a three position switch off, normal, and bass roll off. And I, I have the bass roll off on because you got so much bass from the proximity. And then that, uh, along with, I have the exact same microphone for my bazooki. And uh, this is a Greek bazooki. And uh, this I mounted a little bit differently. Um, I found if I mounted it the same way as the guitar, it was a little bit too bassy. Mm -hmm. And it didn't get the kind of nice clangy characteristic of a bazooki, you know, which you get from the... I was kind of losing that brightness, so... Yeah. So this just holds the same, it's that exact same mic that's inside here, it's just a little bit away from the face, and clamps on the strings behind, between the bridge and tailpiece, which, if I'm careful, it doesn't pull it out of tune mm -hmm. too much. And what do you tune this to? Uh, this is tuned, uh, I would, the easiest way to explain it is like a 12-string guitar, top four strings of a 12-string guitar, one whole step lower. Okay. So this is D, this is A, and this is an octave, uh, F, low and high F, and then C, low and high C. So that's a D minor chord. So it's, it's, you can still translate some of your guitar voicings to this, just the top yeah. halves. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was actually really hard for me when I first was playing it because I play a lot of mandolin, mm -hmm. which is tuned in fifths. And I would look down at this and see these double strings, for, <laughs> and I would want to go to fifths and, you know, not guitar kind of stuff. So, But uh, anyway, both of the instruments then go into this preamp. made by Radial, and it's called a PZ Pre, and it's actually really made for uh, piezo-equipped instruments, but n I'm, I'm plugging the mics into them, uh, excuse me, because it'll give more gain to these mics, and I'm not really used, they, ultimately they should go into a low Z input, mm -hmm. a mic input on a, on a preamp or a little board, but I don't have that. So these have a really high gain, and uh, it also has two different channels, so I can switch between the two. Do you use different channels for the guitar and the bazooki? Yeah, and, and it's only really the input that changes. It's one set of EQ after that. Okay. And uh, if you go through the EQ again, it's got a low cut. I take, uh, I think it's, what is it? It's 
Oh, it's 80 hertz. I, I get rid of 80 because there's nothing on the guitar you need down there. Mm -hmm. It just makes it cloudy. Um, sometimes I'll notch out a, a frequency, you know, a, again, a resonant frequency if I need to. Uh, I don't have it on right now because this PA system is pretty flat. Um, and then this foot switch, well, you can use it as a booster if you want a little bit more level on something. I don't use that because I use a volume control. Um, and then there's a mute switch, which can be handy. And I, I use the phase reverse switch a lot because sometimes if the top of the guitar and the monitor speakers start interacting with each other and get a, a, a feedback, that switch will just eliminate that mm -hmm. by, by taking it out of phase. So that's a, a really useful unit. And the, the EQ on it is really fantastic. I mean, I've cut the highs a little bit because I don't like that scratchy high sound. Um, the mids and the lows right now are pretty flat, but it has a sweepable mids. And so again, if I have a troublesome frequency from the monitors, I can dial that out yeah. pretty easily. Then the signal of that goes out into my amplifier, which is an, uh, a cub made by AAD, a little tiny guy. And I love it because it has no horns or piezo tweeters, <laughs> just two speakers. So you, again, you don't get that harsh, clacky sound. And uh, controls are in the back, so this, uh, that's the input coming from the, the radial. And then, you notice still the EQ is pretty flat on there, and I have it about halfway up. And then this is a, an effects loop, send and return. Oops, sorry. Uh, I send it also out to the PA system there. It's got a DI out. And so the, this zoom pedal, A2.1U, <laughs> um, uh, that's in the effects loop, and I use it mostly for a volume pedal. So I can just back it off when I want to play rhythm, and uh, and if I want to play, you know, something really delicate, harmonics or whatever, I can floor it. Is there a reason you would use this unit over just a standard single-purpose volume pedal? Yeah, well, I all it also has reverb in it, and so uh, I I could set the pedal to control reverb, but on certain songs, this this middle one here, that's l reverb level, so I'll just take that up and down sometimes during the set. Mm -hmm. And uh, all, every once in a while, I, I have a setting for a, uh, a slight chorus effect that I'll use to make the guitar sound a little more like an oud. Mm -hmm. If I mute the, if I mute with my palm mute and play characteristically oud kind of sounds and put that on there, it gives a little bit of a double string sound. I, I rare, I, that's the only like effect kind of thing that I use with this setup. Um, but it works good, you know, you have all of that. And it's got a tuner in it too, which sometimes I use, but in order to get the tuner, you have to hit these both at the same time and hold it down and then it goes to tuner. But sometimes with your feet, it's, that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. So that, I have a, a clip-on tuner for the headstock that I use really for tuning. Mm -hmm. And, um... That's it, then I send the output of the amp to the, to the house, and they get both my bazooki and the guitar out of the same channel, and I try to send them as clear of a signal as possible. And uh, most of the time, if the monitor speakers are, are high quality and they're flat, then I'll get a good sound back. So I, I really rely on the monitors to get my stage level and what I can hear. Um, this is always here, tilted back for me to hear just a little bit, and it helps for the drummer to hear as well. Cool. Well, where can people go online to find out dates you're playing and other projects you might have coming up, both gypsy jazz and electric stuff? Well, it's just uh, johnjorgensen.com, and there's a calendar on there. And, uh, you know, we'll be going all over the world later this year, Germany, Italy, Hawaii, uh, possibly Brazil, you know, and... Uh, of course, some, some things that return each year, like the Guitar Town Festival in Copper Mountain in August. Mm -hmm. uh, that's always really fun. And, um, yeah, there's, you know, a, a, a lot of... <laughs> there's a few different projects that I guess I probably shouldn't talk about yet because they're not, you know, really... Uh, Top secret? Well, it's not secret, but they're, you know, it's like... It's, yeah, you don't want to jinx something by talking about it too early. But, uh, yeah, just just check the calendar from time to time and as soon as things get 
confirmed, they'll be put on there. But I, I'm hoping that this year will be pretty diverse. I mean, uh, already, at the beginning of this year, I played a couple of acoustic shows with the Desert Rose Band, which is unusual. That's like what we did when we first started out back in 1985. And so that was a lot of fun. And uh, I also did a, a show with the Helicasters for the first time in 11 years. And, and, and uh, with my quintet in a course of three nights. So, so the year is starting out uh, you know, pretty eclectically, and I think it'll move on even more from there. All right, John, thanks a lot for talking to us. You're welcome. I'm happy to show you my gear. And uh, hopefully I'll see a lot of the readers of Premier Guitar out there on the road this year. Absolutely. This is Jason Shadrick with PremierGuitar.com.